Today using Apple Motion, we're gonna create this shine effect that you can apply to whatever object you want in Final Cut Pro. Also, if you're a patron, you can actually download this right now. First things first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. Go ahead and select the Final Cut title, and we're gonna set the duration of this to something like two seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and push Open. We're gonna leave the effect source this time. We're gonna zoom out in our browser. We're gonna select our Bezier tool, and we're going to click and create two points down here in the bottom left corner. Then we're gonna make sure and click and create two points in the top right corner. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you completely clear all of the corners. Fill that in by selecting this last point and you should have this Bezier shape. Jump into your inspector, then disable your outline and locate the feather options that are found within your fill settings. From there, you can drag up the feather so that we get this nice smooth edge. But you'll notice that motion locks us off at 100. So to quickly get past that, go ahead and click on that 100 and drag upwards and you can go well beyond that 100 mark. After that, we can jump into our property settings, drop the opacity a little bit, and we'll change our blend mode over to screen. So now all we need to do is actually animate this Bezier shape. Now you do have a couple options. You could animate it manually using the position parameters here and adding keyframes, but I really like using the parameter behaviors that are built into motion. So all we need to do is select our behaviors, select under basic motion, the motion path. What I love about the motion path is it actually gives us two points, point A and point B, and our object is going to move along that motion path for the duration of our parameter behavior. So you can see it's a two second parameter behavior, so it's gonna take two seconds to animate. Drag point A up to the top left corner and point B down past the bottom right corner. So if we play now, we should have this nice sweeping animation. But what's really great about the motion path parameter is we have all these additional options here in the inspector. So we can change our path shape. We can also change the shape type. Currently it's a Bezier shape. We can also change the direction and this is one of my favorite features of this because now we can just immediately change the direction to be reversed and so it'll come from the bottom right corner up to the top left. We can also change the speed. Now currently it's set to constant. If we wanted we could do something like accelerate so it'll actually gain a bunch of speed as it goes to the bottom right hand corner as well as we can change this over to custom and what custom allows us to do is actually create keyframes. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the parameter. I'm going to add a keyframe, move forward about one second, and then we'll go to a full 100. So now this is going to animate over a single second. So this is all super handy and what's great is we can publish all of this over to Final Cut. Pro. So all we need to do is click on this down arrow next to each of the parameters and push publish. So I'm going to do that for all of these, which is a tedious process. I really wish Apple would just enable the ability to publish all at once, but this is what we are left with. So now all of those parameters are published, but there is one other thing we need to do in motion before we move to Final Cut Pro. Currently, if I were to put the shine effect on maybe some text or a PNG with an intricate shape to it, it would actually just fill the entire screen with the shine effect. And we want this to be locked in to whatever it is applied to. Go ahead and right click on your Bezier shape and select add image mask. Then drag your effect source over to the image mask. This is telling motion that we only want this effect to happen on whatever the effect is applied to. But there is one problem, the effect source is disabled by default, so go ahead and re-enable that and you should be good to go. Now I'm going to push Command S and that will allow us to publish over to Final Cut Pro. I'm just gonna call this the Shine Effect and you can send this to whatever category you like. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in my tutorial category and then I will push Publish. Now all we need to do is jump over into Final Cut Pro. So I'll just locate my tutorial category and then we'll find our shine effect. Drag that onto whatever you want to have the shine. It's not currently animated because I left it on the custom speed, but I'm gonna go ahead and reset that parameter. I will add a keyframe, move forward, and finish it off with a full 100%. So now my object has this beautiful looking shine happening right on it. We could change it also over to accelerate. Now, right now, because our object is actually longer than two seconds, it's going to stretch out the effect for the full duration. If we want it to only stay within those two seconds, all we need to do is go back to motion, go to the very end and push Shift M. That is going to create this marker. Double click that marker, 
go to your type and set it over to something like build in mandatory. So now Motion is telling Final Cut Pro that this has to be the two second duration. So that is how you can make a really quick shine effect for whatever object you want. You can apply this to text, to PNGs, to images, whatever you need to give it kind of that extra pizzazz. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you. If it was, consider press that like button. If you're a patron, you can download this right now. With that being said, my name is Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Pro, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.